Can you describe what happens to the brain um, when you get addicted, let's say? When a person takes a drug of abuse, like cocaine, cocaine elicits a dopamine response that's far greater in magnitude and much more persistent than a natural reward. And cocaine causes that um, response without any regard to a useful behavior. Uh, in other words, food, sex, social interaction shapes our behavior in useful ways. Cocaine does not. And what happens gradually over time is that the brain becomes dependent on that cocaine to elicit those powerful dopamine signals. So the brain adapts to that in several ways, but among which it's going to respond by dampening its sensitivity. But unfortunately, it dampens sensitivity not only to cocaine, but to all rewards. So it leaves the person essentially depressed or unable to feel rewarded by natural rewards in his or her environment. Are those changes in the, br in the brain ever reversible? We think that they are reversible. Clinically, what we see is that some people who become addicted to a drug of abuse remain addicted for a lifetime. Even after years of abstinence, even after decades of abstinence, some individuals are at increased risk for relapse and relapse and can relapse extremely quickly. And one of the strategies is to think of ways that we can help the brain repair the damage caused by drugs of abuse. They say that if you start younger, um, below 18, the yes. damage is even more striking than, or addiction is even greater than if you... Absolutely. In fact, there are st statistics showing that if an individual is not uh, addicted or uh, using drugs regularly by age 18 or 21, it is unlikely that he or she will become addicted later in life. And uh, the reason for that is we believe the adolescent brain is much more plastic or adaptable so that exposure to a drug can produce these types of changes that we've talked about to a much greater extent than in an adult brain. Can you see um, these changes on MRIs or other scans? Can you see the difference between a person who's not addicted and one who is? We don't yet have the tools that enable us to look at individual nerve cells, let alone at the DNA within those cells in the living human patient. That's a challenge for brain imaging methods and it's something that we're very interested here in, uh, in doing is to evolve these technologies to gain that kind of resolution. In terms of um, triggers for addiction, uh, stress, you know, does that exacerbate the addiction? Exposure to uh, stress can trigger relapse. Uh, exposure to what we call cues. These are environmental stimuli that had previously been paired with drug use. For example, a person who has alcoholism goes back to a bar where they used to get drunk. Mm -hmm. A cocaine addict or heroin addict even going to the street corner where they used to buy drugs can trigger intense craving and, and relapse. Mm -hmm. And uh, one, of the, uh, uh, one of the goals of treatment really is to figure out ways to help addicts uh, resist that uh, craving and relapse because that is uh, a major clinical challenge. Is uh, drug abuse a willpower situation or is, yeah. is addiction a disease? Yeah, there's a big debate around in society, and this has probably been going on for about a hundred or a thousand years, and that is whether drug addiction is a disease or is it a matter of weak willpower. It's clearly a brain condition. It, at the core, addiction involves the effects of a physical substance, a certain type of chemical, drug of abuse, on a, on a physical substrate of vulnerable brain. That's clearly a strict biological process, a disease process. The challenge is that we know that addiction is more than that. It also has social and psychological features. That's why uh, I think we still today have a problem convincing society to treat a person with an addiction the same way we would treat someone with cancer, diabetes, or heart disease. Is there anything more we can do as a society to help scientists like you or change the perception to, in terms of this disease? Is there something you'd like to see? The main thing I'd like to see is a definitive treatment. I started my lab 27 years ago, and we thought that the application of molecular biology to the question of how drugs change the brain or how stress changes the brain 
would lead to new treatments within five to 10 years. Here we are 27 years later, we've learned an enormous amount about the brain. We've even learned a lot about addiction and depression, but we have not yet been able to translate that new knowledge into a treatment. So one of the major challenges for us here at Mount Sinai is to do that, is to succeed. Mm -hmm. And we have some ideas about how we can work with clinicians in unique ways to drive new treatments into the clinic.